Welcome to this episode of 10 Minutes with Sam, and this is Akshat Singh. Our guest for today is Mr. Parthapratham Mitra, an ex Indian Economic Services officer. Mr. Mitra is considered to be an authority on labor economics and on migration. And today we would be talking about the migrant labor crisis that was caused by the COVID 19 pandemic. Welcome to the show, sir. So the format of the show is fairly simple. We have 10 minutes and we'll try covering as much ground as we can in these 10 minutes. So without uh, much further ado, let me jump straight to the first question. Uh, yes. So we know that the migration crisis that was caused due to COVID-19 is certainly unprecedented in terms of its scale. The only comparable migration crisis that the country and the South Asia region has witnessed uh, is the one that was caused by the partition in 1947. Um, what can you tell us quantitatively about how this migration crisis has affected the uh, rate of unemployment, the availability of labor, and the economy in general? Yeah, uh, the, mig the plight of the migrant workers was well known as uh, practitioners in the field of labor one knew that the laws, the relevant laws were not getting enforced properly, although there is this Interstate Migrant Workmen's Act of 1979, then there is this Unorganized Workers Social Security Act of 2008. But these were enforced more in breach than anything else. So what was probably not anticipated is the, is the you know, dimensions of the, the migration problem when the, you see, the lockdown had happened all of a sudden. Roughly the figures are about 30% of the workforce, which is about 480 million. So it would vary between 11 to 12 million. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are no records. And uh, what estimates I have seen, uh, I think all the states have registered about 68 lakhs or so, which is a gross underestimate. Mm -hmm. Understood, sir. Uh, yeah. that's very interesting, uh, which brings me to my next question, sir. Uh, we are talking about a severe labor shortage due to a lot of migrant laborers moving back to the rural communities that they came from. And on the other hand, we also saw that even before the pandemic uh, took the shape that it is currently in, India was facing its most severe unemployment crisis that it has seen in the past 45 years. So on one hand, we have shortage of labor. On the other hand, we have an unemployment crisis, uh, which is already underway. Do you think that these two forces will balance each other out? And if so, what happens to the laborers who find themselves unemployed after this equilibrium position has been reached? Yeah. Uh, so the estimates say uh, there is a uh, professor at the Center for Development Studies in Trivandrum, who have uh, Professor Irudai Rajan, he has estimated that roughly 30% of the migrant workmen are not going to come back which means say 30% of about 12 million. So mm -hmm. that is the quantum which will not come back. Now, the issue is that certain industries would face uh, a labor shortage, particularly the manufacturing and the construction sector, mm -hmm. where they had a lot of work going on and due to the pandemic, uh, they had to stop the work. In some sites, uh, there are reports that the migrant workmen were kept uh, under lockdown, the employers did take uh, care of their uh, uh, health, safety, and welfare, but that is more an exception rather than the rule. Now, many state governments have offered uh, them to kind of train them and engage them in the local industries, and some states have also offered that the local industries could depend on the migrant workers. But yes, uh, this is a, a mismatch between the supply and demand and industry, I think, has to live with it for a while till uh, conditions settle down. Absolutely, sir. So you mentioned that uh, states have been trying to develop certain skills for migrant mm -hmm. laborers so that they can be employed in local industries. Uh, now, sir, you've done some extensive yeah. work when it comes to skill development and uh, rural areas. Uh, my question to you is that don't you think that uh, this lockdown period has given an ample time to people uh, who already have access to certain resources to develop certain skills, whereas people in rural areas haven't been able to explore this opportunity and use it for skill development, thus widening the gap 
between uh, the, the level of skill and employability for the citizens? Yes, Akshat. If you see the skill profile of the migrant workers, they are mostly from the construction sector and the allied uh, sectors connected with construction, plumbing, carpentry, electricians. Now, the age profile of these migrant workers are such that teaching them new skills would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, the famous MG Narega uh, program has come in handy. And there are reports that the Ministry of Rural Development has almost exhausted its annual budget in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So Narega, it seems, is picking up. But these are, you know, crisis kind of a situation uh, uh, measures. So we cannot kind of sustain on Narega, but this is a good stopgap measure. And they will have to think about skilling these workers and make them employable. And we hope that some of them would also go back to their original places of work. Absolutely, sir. And um, I feel that while employment is certainly the end goal, till the time employment uh, does not really take shape, um, a lot of people are facing an acute crisis in terms of the money that they have to spend. Uh, and uh, that is caused by the lack of employment, the lack of wages, uh, and so on and so forth. A lot of government experts have uh, proposed a wide variety of recommendations to deal with this, uh, which have included social security nets, welfare schemes, subsidies, and uh, on and on. Uh, but you have proposed something slightly different. You have proposed uh, uh, the, the harbinging of the universal basic income. So, so uh, my question to you is, uh, uh, why do you think universal basic income in India would not lead to the sort of deflationary trap um, that it is accused of? And uh, why do you think that the universal basic income here would ultimately work, given that we would need to get rid of our subsidies and the existing welfare schemes in order to implement it? Yeah, uh, Akshat, if you divide the question into two parts, one can respond. One is the immediate measures which we need to take to feed the migrant workmen to give them cash. Those immediate measures, the UBI or you know the, the social welfare schemes, the, the, the Social Security Act and all would probably not help. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the purpose is to give them cash and mm -hmm. food grains in hand, which mm -hmm. the 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 the, uh, the measures which uh, the uh, government has taken uh, under part of the Atmanirbhar package probably would suffice to an extent, but that's not the full. Uh, more needs to be done. As regards the universal basic income, this is a concept. This is an idea which has been uh, been debated among economists. Mm -hmm. uh, the economic survey of 2016-17 has uh, a detailed discussion on the uh, concept. Uh, it has been tried in other countries, particularly the, in Finland, uh, then parts of Latin America. And even in India, we have had uh, small experiments in Madhya Pradesh, uh, then in Kerala. So, but these experiments have kind of said that, yes, uh, the, the recipients of the universal basic income would not shirk work, which is one of the major concerns. But there is no real question or no solution on the trade-off between UBI and subsidies. Mm -hmm. A trade-off will, will have to be there because the subsidies are uh, accounting for almost 3.9% of the uh, GDP. Mm -hmm. And uh, the UBI would also cost 4.2-4.3% at an annual UBI of 6,500. That is 2016-17 figures. Okay. the numbers would have gone up. So this is the real issue to be discussed and decided. And I mean, of course, there also has to be uh, the, the political value of the subsidies and uh, welfare schemes, which would make it even more yes. difficult. To yes, yes. This is a political um, call at the end of the day. All these major decisions are political calls. So the government of, of the day has to decide. Probably a targeted, there seems to be some consensus among the economists that a targeted approach uh, could be looked at. Absolutely, sir. This brings us to the end of the interview. Thank you so much for being with us here today. And uh, we will certainly speak with you very time soon. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah.